uh, proponents are all very much, you know, Council on Foreign Relation elite types, and here we are in the third party. But even more than that, um, whoever one of us wins, we definitely have a large um, mountain to uh, conquer once in office because California is just going down. We were once the seventh largest economy in the world. We've slipped to uh, apparently the eighth, and we continue to slip as we become the largest, uh, you know, debted. We are now the lowest debted, uh, highest debted uh, state in the country and, um, and growing. In fact, our governor and our legislature are in a special session um, trying to, they're saying that it, we're in a state of emergency and they need to cut a $42 billion deficit. What do you think are some of the biggest economic problems taking place in California right now? You know, I've read a story about uh, Schwarzenegger considering selling some of the state parks to make up for the deficit. Do you know anything about this story, your thoughts on this? Well, first of all, we have, first of all, let me, he also wanted to sell, you know, items on eBay. So uh, just really ridiculous. They, that what they're doing is they're doing this, the, the typical elite. Well, let's just find some surface uh, topics that make it look like we're attempting to do something. When here in the state of California, we are the state with the highest illegal alien population. We spend over $10.5 billion in our state alone on just the public welfare for illegal aliens. Um, you know, that doesn't include, uh, you know, it only includes health care. It's not including education. Um, it's not including other special things like food stamps. In, in, in L.A. County alone, we spend about $3 billion a year on illegal aliens. And I, we all know why illegal aliens come here. They are coming here for a better life, but at the expense of the taxpayers and at the expense of our own infrastructure here. So, so these are the real issues that need to be addressed. And they're not even looking. They're not even looking at those. Um, there's also so much wasteful spending. We have a legislature that is out of control. You know, they're full time. They need to go part time. There are many other areas in which we could look. They our our, our mm -hmm. state because it is so um, taking away our liberties and rights. They've pushed out. They've taxed us, overtaxed us. They've right. taxed businesses out of our state. They've you know, uh, you know, our governor, I don't think it's, you know, everyone knows that he has, you know, was famous for signing some agreement with Tony Blair regarding global warming, which I don't know how your viewers feel about this, but I, I know that I feel it's, uh, it's a hoax. And uh, we, because of this, they created a global warming solutions tax in a AB 32 in our state. And it's just it's really putting businesses out of business. Mm -hmm. So the problems that they themselves, the elite themselves, have created are the problems they're not even addressing. So it's it's we we have a vicious cycle that we need to end. I also want to get your take on these military drills, uh, which some call martial law drills, taking place in multiple states. Um, as the governor, uh, being a liberty candidate. Um, how do you think some of this should be approached? Because a lot of people um, are expressing the opinion that uh, governors no longer have any power. They just have to take commands from Homeland Security, and they need to go along to get along to keep their particular, you know, uh, the job in office. Well, uh, what is your take on that that fallacy that a lot of people still tend to believe? Well, first of all, and I, I, I've been saying this at many of the events I attend, every citizen needs to get out a constitution. If they don't have one, they need to go to the post office, to the library, wherever. They need to go get a constitution and read the Bill of Rights to find out truly what is legal and not legal. And the Tenth Amendment, which thankfully many estates, um, and I want to thank the Tenth Amendment Center um, very kindly for not only supporting our campaign, but being out there to to rally, uh, you know, these nullification rallies to to in educate individuals that the Tenth Amendment made it so that the states had powers over the federal government, not the other way right. around. And, and you know, sovereign when, states. when the swine flu scare came out, it was shortly after a bunch of articles came out, I'm not saying it was related, but it makes you wonder, 
there were a lot of different states following what you're talking about, 10th Amendment, state sovereignty, states' rights, and then all of a sudden we saw the panic taking place. Now we need the government to do even more drills with states, so the mainstream media was telling the people to keep us safe from this pandemic, yet we're losing our sovereignty in the process of allowing them to do some of these drills, and so it was interesting to see the timing of all of that take place. Oh, I totally agree with you, and I and I know so many times people call, you know, people like you and me conspiracy mm-hmm. theorists, but I truly believe that people, the, the internet, it, the internet, even your local library is full of information where you can find the facts. These individuals, the Bilderbergs, the, you know, the CFR, the Trilateral Commission, Richard Haas, George Soros, they don't hide what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, of course, it's not on the evening news, but it's out there for all to read. It's They're out there. It's out. George, George Soros says uh, China should run the New World Order. That was about a month ago. Yeah, yes, I know. So, you know, people just need to stop watching, you know, the alphabet soup mm-hmm. on news and, and actually get online, find um, other Americans and exchange, and exchange information. I mean, that's how I get my news. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 you know, we're definitely, I think something's definitely brewing. Just the fact that here there's a strong Tenth Amendment movement, and I'm glad that you read the news about the Council of Governors. Uh, I received that a couple of days ago, and that is pretty astonishing. If that happens, that takes away, that will take, that, it really basically kills the Constitution. And I don't know if you saw the latest, most recent Ron Paul video in which he's addressing Congress, and it's almost like he's saying, get ready for the revolution. And I encourage everybody to go Google the Ron Paul Congress. It was, I believe, January 8th. Um, something's definitely brewing, and you know, the, 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 we see them collapsing our, our, our economy throughout the country, throughout the world, and I, I'm hoping that it's not too late for we liberty-minded individuals to take our country back, take our sovereign rights, and, and rebuild. And that's why I think that the 2010, I'm glad you have two liberty candidates on your show tonight, because people cannot, they, you cannot stay home in 2010 or 2012 this election cycle. I hear so many people who say they don't vote. You cannot do that this time. And you cannot go in there and just vote party loyal. You need to know who the candidates are this time. It is crucial because the revolution really is going to start at the voting booth in 2010. You really, it, it, it could change the direction of our country. And it's really, at this point, our, 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 our hope right now. Absolutely. Uh, we actually have you for about five more minutes before Adam comes on. And so okay. I want to ask you some other things. Like, what was it like meeting uh, Aaron Russo? Oh, you know what? It was, first of all, I, before I, I was in politics, I worked in the entertainment industry and, and I w- worked in, as an actress and I worked behind the scenes as, as a produce, as mm-hmm. producer. So um, I wanted to meet him for other reasons. <laughs> you know, I, I, I loved The Rose, I, I loved his film work. And um, so, but when I, I hadn't seen, at that point, I hadn't seen American Freedom to Fascism. I, I didn't know that part mm-hmm. of Aaron Russo. He was an absolutely fascinating, loving, giving, extraordinary man. Him and I clicked. I mean, we just clicked and we corresponded um, right up until he really got ill towards the end. But that meeting really, because I was with Art Olivier, who I was the campaign manager of, and it was really that meeting that helped with Art and Aaron to turn around and make me open my eyes and start connecting the dots. So I really owe Art and Aaron uh, quite a bit for the direction that Mm -hmm. my politics have taken me. So Mm -hmm. he was a great loss, great loss. Well, he's going to be remembered for a very long time. For those that haven't seen the documentary film, uh, America from Freedom to Fascism, you might want to go ahead and Google that. It is available to watch on free on the Internet for free. And uh, there are many other great films other than that one, but that that film definitely was the, f- the film for a lot of people that didn't wake up to what was going on prior to the, that film's release. Yes, uh, I was one of them. And, and as a matter of fact, 
up until that film, I, I didn't even know who Ron Paul was. I, I you know, I don't, I didn't pay attention to congressmen in other states. So it really, it really educated me. And I started doing my research afterward. And, and I will say Art did continue to steer me in the right, right direction. So thank you, Art Olivier. Um, I just, you know, we have to be libertarian minded, constitutional minded individuals. And, you know, the founding.